హలో వెల్కమ్ టు ఎన్పిటిఎల్ ఎన్ఓసి అండ్ ఇంట్రొడక్టరీ కోర్స్ ఆన్ పాయింట్స్ ఎట్ టెక్నాలజీ పార్ట్ టూ మోడ్యూల్ ఫార్టీ వన్ డైమెన్షన్ ఆఫ్ సబ్ స్పేస్ ఇస్ అండ్ యూనియన్స్ టుడే ఓకే టేక్ ఎ సబ్ స్పేస్ ఆఫ్ ఎక్స్ సే ఎక్స్ ప్రైమ్ let us have this notation boundary daba i read it daba boundary prime okay inside boundary inside x prime okay denote the boundary of a subset uh, with respect to x and x prime respectively then for any a inside x we have the boundary of a intersection x prime taken inside x prime that is a subset of boundary of a without any uh, decoration this boundary just denotes the boundary inside the larger space x so this is an elementary result which you have seen in the first part itself but now it becomes very crucial so let us go through it a little carefully take a point which is the boundary of a intersection x prime in the subspace x prime we start with that a can open set u okay of x now such that x is inside u we know that u intersection x prime is a neighborhood of x in x prime and hence u intersection x prime intersects both a intersection x prime and its complement inside x prime right because it's the boundary point of a intersection x prime therefore this u intersection a which is the union of u intersection x prime and a intersection x prime this has to be non empty okay so we have proved that starting with any open neighborhood of x u intersection a is non empty what else we have to prove we have to prove that it's a complement also intersection intersects u then it would be a boundary point of a intersection x prime a, a itself inside x right so what is the intersection of u with x minus a that contains u intersection x prime as well as complement of a inside x prime okay so after all it's x minus a okay so those which are x prime inside x prime those which are not inside x prime i have taken entire u intersection x prime but the first part is u intersection x prime the second part is x prime minus a intersection x prime okay so one of them has to be non empty as we have seen therefore it follows that x must be inside boundary of a okay so one way is true in fact equality hardly occurs unless a itself is a closed subset of a intersection x prime is a closed subset of x prime or x prime itself is closed and so on so all that we need is one way in closure here so we will use this one heavily now every subspace of a space of dimension less than or equal to n is of dimension less than or equal to n okay when you take some spaces dimension does not increase so this is the theorem here now okay so start with a base for x such that dimension of the boundary of each member is less than or equal to n minus 1 so that is the definition of dimension being less than or equal to n then we know that if you take b prime namely b intersection x prime as b weighs over b okay that family is a base for x prime because subspace topology by the lemma we have boundary of b intersection x prime inside x prime is contained inside boundary of b okay now we induct on n if n is 0 this implies 
the boundary of B is empty, therefore for each B inside B, therefore this is also empty. So this proves a statement for theorem of the theorem for n equal to 0. Inductively assume that we have proved the statement for n minus 1. Now this implies boundary uh, the dimension of boundary of B intersection x prime is less than equal to n minus 1 because it is subspace of the corresponding thing here. Hence dimension of x prime is less than equal to n. So all the time we are using this one. Okay. If the dimension is uh, say 5 here, that will be dimension will be less than equal to 5. Once we have proved that, for, uh, for 6 dimension it will prove and so on. Okay, starting with 0, you can build up the induction. Alright. Okay, next theorem is let x be a subspace of a separable matrix space, any space for that matter. Okay. Okay, a separable matrix space you start with. Then x has dimension less than or equal to n if and only if given any closed subspace C of x and a point P inside P not inside C, outside C, there is a closed subset D of x such that dimension of D is less than or equal to n minus 1 and x minus d is a disjoint union b with p inside a and c inside b. Remember, if remember what is S2, S2 said that points can be separated, uh, closed set and a point can be separated by clopen sets. Clopen sets were those which such that dimension of the boundary, sorry, the boundary itself is empty. Now here we have something else. This is an extended S2. It is n minus n dimensional uh, S version of S2. Okay. So dimension of x less than equal to n, you can't expect closed sets and a point outside it could be separated by clopen sets. Clopen sets means boundary is empty. Now on that boundary we are going to put condition. So, this is elaborately stated in a different way here. You throw away a closed subset D of dimension n minus 1. Then you have a separation. Okay. When you have a clopen set, the boundary played that role. That is why we did not have to bother about this, this way stating. Now, here we throw away some closed subset of course, away from C and P. P and C you have to retain. Okay. So, X minus D is A union B. Okay. A and B are both closed and both open inside X minus D and P is inside A and C is inside B or the other way around. So, this is the generalized version of S2 now you see. So, this is equivalent to having dimension n, just like S2 was equivalent to having dimension 0. Let us prove this one. Suppose x has dimension less than equal to n, with C and P as stated, means closed subset and a point outside, take the neighborhood U which is complement of C. So, that is the neighborhood of P right by regularity of x because x is several matrix space after all we get an open set v in x such that p is inside v closure of v is inside complement of c because p is inside complement of c and complement of c is open okay in between we have got this v and v bar since the dimension is less than or equal to n, we get an open set W inside this V, P belonging to W in contained inside V such that now you take D, what is D? D I have to choose, namely boundary of W is of dimension less than or equal to n minus 1. Okay, so this is the statement for dimension 
I mean condition for dimension being less than equal to n. Okay. Now look at x minus d. D is a boundary of something, so it is a closed subset. So x minus d is obviously union of w and x minus w bar. Okay, both of them are open. Union is this one, so both of them are closed in x minus d. Okay, p is inside w. All right. And C is inside x minus w bar because because of what? The boundary of w bar doesn't intersect in P. Okay, v bar is contained inside a complement of C, and w is contained inside v. So w bar is also contained inside v bar. So C is contained inside x minus w bar. Okay. Conversely. Starting with any point in X and an open subset U such that P is inside U, put C equal to complement of C this time. So C is closed subset and P is outside that. From the given condition, we get a closed subset D of dimension less than equal to n minus one such that X minus D is separated A separation B A bar B. With P is inside A, and C is inside B. This implies A is an open subset of X. Okay, because D is a closed subset, so A is open inside X minus D, and D is closed. So X minus D is open inside X. So A is an open subset of X. P is inside A. A is contained inside U. Okay, because. Because it is uh, disjoint from this C, that's all. Also, boundary of A will be contained inside D, and hence of dimension less than equal to n minus one. So what we have done, starting with any point and an open set, we have produced a neighborhood A such that its boundary is of dimension less than equal to n minus one. So this is just means that for every point we have done, so we have a base for X. Consisting of elements A such that their boundaries are less than equal to dimension n minus one. So that means that dimension of X is less than equal to n. All right. Now it is convenient and useful to express the condition for a subspace X prime of the, of a space. To have dimension less than equal to n, purely in terms of, you know, condition on larger space X. Okay, we know what is the condition of subspace. There is a base for subspace with the water blah 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 satisfying. Okay, so we can say that it is the uh, generalized S two condition, right? So let us convert that purely in terms of x. So that will be that will be useful for us. So this lemma says, start with a metric space. This is a general lemma. Okay, let x prime be a subspace. Suppose A and B are subsets of x prime, which are mutually separated in x prime. Remember, mutually separated means. A intersection closure of B is empty. Similarly, B intersection closure of A is empty. This time, I am taking closures prime inside X prime because there are two spaces in all here. You don't know where you are taking. If you just say closure or B bar and so on, I will use bar to denote the closures inside X, the standard one. Okay, for subspaces, I will use this notation closure prime. Okay. Then there exists open subset W in X such that A is contained inside W. W bar intersection B is empty. So this is again a general result. Okay, while proving studying metric spaces, we have seen such proofs. But let me recall it because now it has become crucial. Okay, all that I have to do is. Use the metric property. By the way, this is general thing. Just about any metric spaces. Okay, so put W A equal to 
union of all open balls B R A, where A range is inside A, and one condition on R, namely three times R B three times R A, ball of radius three R around A, does not intersection B. So points of this, you know, A must be far away from B. This one three times B R A must be bigger than. This must be empty. Of course, R should be positive. All right. This is just the definition. W A is union of all such balls. Similarly, W B is union of B R B. B rings over A. Same condition. Now A and B interchange. B three R B intersection A is empty. Okay, then clearly both W and W B are open subsets of X because they are unions of open balls. It suffices to show that A is inside W A. W A intersection W B is empty because B is inside W B, and that is open. Automatically, it will imply W A bar intersection B is empty. So after that, you can take W equal to this W A. We want W to be an open set containing A such that its closure in X does not intersect B. Okay, a set does not intersect an open neighborhood around a point around a, a set will not intersect. Its closure will not intersect that set. Okay, that's all. So let us prove that. Okay. A is inside W A, and this one inside this one provided. See, we have not yet uh, stated. So, what is the hypothesis? Hypothesis is A and B are separated, mutually separated. We have not used that one yet, right? The basic observation we make here is that if D prime. Is the metric D restricted to X prime? The same metric, but points are taken inside X prime. That's the meaning. Okay. Then for all X prime inside X prime, B prime T X prime. Uh, this is a definition. T is the radius. X prime is the center. Set of all Y prime in X prime, such that D prime of Y prime X prime is less than T. Nothing but the standard ball in X around X prime. And points inside X prime. I am just repeating the meaning of what is the restricted metric here. Let me move that. Now, A intersection closure of B inside X prime is empty. Implies, see these two are A and closure. Closure. There exists some point R positive such that the ball of radius 3A. Of course, this prime I'm taking. Only everything working inside X prime now. Intersection B is empty. Okay. But then B three. I'm talking about one point here for each A. B three A intersection B is B three uh, R A intersection X prime B because see these things are A and B are inside X after all. X prime after all. Okay, this ball is outside, inside X. If you instead of B, B is X prime intersection. B I can replace. Once you have X X prime, this is nothing B B prime of three R A. B prime three R A intersection B is empty. Okay, so for each A, if you choose R like this, then what you have got is that point and this neighborhood is inside there. So this proves that. When you take the union, A is contained inside W A. Argument is similar because A and B have been interchanged in defining W B, so B is also contained inside W B. All right. Now you have to prove that W A intersection W B is empty, and that is why why uh, we are taking only balls of radius R, but condition is on on the ball of you know three times larger that one. B three R, so that the triangle inequality will help you. That is all here. So the standard triangle inequality you have to show. Suppose your point, which is in both W A and W B. Okay, 
that implies this x a, this x is inside some b r a as well as in b s b for r and s some positive number right and a and b are inside a and b respectively but then distance between a and b a to x and then x to b will be less than r plus s okay triangle inequality here b 3 r a intersection b is empty this implies r plus s must be bigger than 3 r right because the ball of 3 r a doesn't intersect this so r plus s must be bigger than this one okay that is what is the meaning of this one we cancel out one as s is bigger than 2 r similarly b 3 s b intersection a is empty that is the choice of this uh, s and r after all that will imply r process is bigger than 3 s okay but now s is bigger than 2 r so r is bigger than 2 s right so s is bigger than 2 r r is bigger than 2 s now that is absurd and there are different ways of getting contradiction once you know that the triangle inequality has to be used here okay now let us go to the zero dimensional no, dimension theory let x prime contain inside x now i am working with a separable matrix basis okay <laughs> then x prime has dimension less than equal to n if and only if x prime okay for every point p belonging to x there exists arbitrary small neighborhoods w of p in x i want everything in x now okay such that dimension of this w boundary of w is also taken inside x intersected with x prime is less than or equal to n -1. okay that is as as far as you can go everything trying to do only in terms of x it's not possible somewhere you have to you have to involve x prime and that is involved only at the last moment you have a neighborhood of point neighborhood of that point for every point okay inside arbitrary small neighborhood of that point such that you look at the boundary of that inside x now you intersect with x prime dimension of that must be less than or equal to okay everything if you don't worry about going to x at all inside x prime that is true from that i have to get a neighborhood w of this point inside x with this property so that is the gist of the theorem okay and the converse converse is obvious here anyway assume that the given condition is satisfied so that is part is converse part here let p belong to x prime and u be a neighborhood of p in x prime now every neighborhood can be expanded to a neighborhood of of the point inside the larger space right by the definition of subspace topology let, let u be a neighborhood of p in x such that u prime is u intersection x prime then by the given condition you have a smaller neighborhood w of p such that w is contained inside u and dimension of w intersection x prime is of dimension less than or equal to n minus 1 this is the stated uh, uh, condition in the theorem now you take u prime equal to w intersection x prime then u prime is contained inside v prime and we know that the boundary of v prime inside x prime is contained inside boundary of w intersection x prime so this lemma we are using it again here which is given to be of dimension less than n minus 1 okay so now we can conclude by theorem 9.2 9.12 that uh, the dimension of x prime is less than equal to n minus so n okay Converse. Suppose dimension of x prime is less than equal to n. 
given a point p inside x prime and a neighbor road open subset in the larger space x such that p is inside you there exists an open subset v inside x such that p inside v prime which is v intersection x prime contained inside u prime which is u intersection x prime and dimension of this v prime the boundary of this v prime in x prime has dimension less than 2 n minus 1 okay this is the meaning of dimension of x prime is less than or equal to n starting with an arbitrary neighborhood u inside that i can find a neighborhood v prime with this property because dimension of x prime is less than or equal to n okay the boundary of this x prime is taken inside this one you recall that this is nothing but closure inside v prime to closure inside x prime of v prime minus v prime which is same thing as you subtract v doesn't matter that is the meaning of this one all right now recall that if a is an open set in a topological space y and b is y minus a bar then a and b being disjoint open sets they are mutually separated in fact why okay a start with an open subset and take b to be y minus a bar so automatically the boundary of you know a and b are themselves are, are disjoint open subset and the union will be uh, so they are separated by boundary of the red some hole here applying this with y equal to x prime a equal to v prime and b equal to x prime minus the closure of v prime closure taken inside x prime okay this general statement i am applying it for y equal to x prime now I start with the open subset a which is v prime and b i am taking the complement of of uh, its closure or closure of a this is here we conclude that this a and b are mutually separated in x prime therefore by the above lemma previous lemma we get an open subset w of x such that v prime is inside w closure of w intersection x prime minus the closure of this one that is b is empty so this is b i have taken therefore w bar intersection x prime if you take only in this intersection that must be contained inside this subset which you have thrown away once you throw away this one it's empty so this must be contained inside closure of b prime inside x prime okay we also have b prime is inside inside contained here w now okay So they started with such a thing, and hence v itself equal to v prime intersection x prime, right? That is how we started with v being a neighborhood of uh, v being an open subset of x here. V prime to say that is contained w intersection x prime. So putting these two together, what we have is boundary of w intersection x prime will be boundary of w by definition. W bar minus W intersection x prime, which is W bar intersection x prime minus points of W have to be thrown away. W intersection x prime. Okay, but this is nothing but the closure of V. This is contained in the closure of V prime, and that is a large. This is a small subset of this one. This is a larger subset. This is a subset of this one. So. This this is subset of this one because this is subset of this one. This is subset of this one. Okay, so but this is nothing but boundary of V prime taken inside X prime, and that is precisely the statement in the corners part. So you took some uh, set theory, set uh, topology here. You see, you have to do it carefully. Now. we have a beautiful theorem here not very beautiful because you may expect that dimension of the union is equal to dimension of a plus dimension of v 
However, such sweeping things uh, won't work. So slight modification is necessary. So yet it is quite beautiful. That is what I want to say. A and B are subsets of a separable matrix space. No other condition. Then dimension of the union is less than or equal to dimension of A plus dimension of B plus one. Okay. Only thing is, they should be defined in the sense that if one of them is infinite, suppose this is infinite, then a dimension of a is infinite, dimension of b, then uh, this is less than equal to infinite is obvious. If this is infinite, one of them will be infinite. So some such things are there. I want to avoid all that. I want to take the case wherein. Dimension of a plus b is finite. Dimension of a is finite. Dimension of b is finite. Okay, you can examine when what happens when they are infinite and so on. No problem. You see, when you are writing inequality here, you have to be careful about uh, something being infinite. And if this is infinite and this is finite, no problem. If this is infinite, this means that one of them here must be infinite. Okay, I am not covering that case here. Okay, let us do induction. Induction can work for finite cases only, right? On the sum dimension of A plus dimension of B, the least value of dimension of A plus dimension of B, both of them empty, is minus two, right? And then, if both of them are empty, is also empty. Okay, minus two plus one is minus one, so this is this is okay. <laughs> okay, you see, even at the even at that level, empty is at empty set. Okay, dimension of a and b is empty is less than or equal to minus one minus one doesn't would have won't have made sense, right? See, minus one is not less than or equal to minus one plus minus one, so you have to add one more. Even at that level. This plus one is necessary there, okay? Even at the very beginning. All right. So this case is over, the least case. All right. Now assume di dimension of a plus b, dimension of a plus dimension of b is greater than or equal to minus one, which just means that at least one of a or b must be non-empty. That's all. Okay, suppose the statement is true for all pairs of spaces A prime B prime, whenever this happens, namely for which dimension of A prime plus dimension of B prime is less than dimension of A plus dimension of B. This is the inductive inductive hypothesis here, not just for A and B. Okay, whenever see this is some number which is bigger than equal to minus one. For numbers which are smaller than this, namely sum total, the uh, induction is on this one, right? Smaller than that, the property should be true, namely dimension of a prime even b prime should be less than or equal to one plus dimension of a prime plus dimension of b prime. That is the inductive hypothesis. Then we want to prove it for one higher, namely, first of all, it follows that a even b is non-empty. That's what I have, I have told you already. Take P to be in the union, okay, B and U be a neighborhood of P. By symmetry, we may assume P is either in A or in B. So you assume A just for writing down the proof. By the previous theorem, there exists a neighborhood V of P such that V is contained inside U and dimension of V intersection A. Is less than equal to dimension of a minus one. The previous theorem enters here. You see, everything is happening inside X except the last condition, namely dimension of W V, double V intersection A is of dimension less than equal to this one. Okay, so we also have dimension of Boundary of V intersection B is less than the dimension of B by because subspaces have this dimension. Here is just the subspace. Okay, therefore 
we can apply the induction to the pair boundary of intersection A and boundary of intersection B. This by A prime B prime. The sum total dimension is smaller than dimension of A plus dimension of B. One is smaller strictly this is A minus one. The other one is at least that much. So sum total will be less than dimension of A plus dimension of B. Therefore, induction hypothesis should be applicable to these two subspaces. Okay, to conclude that the union of these two subspaces is less than equal dimension less than equal to one plus dimension of the first one is a minus one dimension of a minus one here you see the other one is less than equal to dimension of b okay so some total one and one cancels out dimension of dimension of b okay since this is true for every point p inside union. From the previous theorem, we conclude that dimension of the space, namely A union B, must be one plus dimension of A plus dimension of B. See, this is for the boundary of the neighborhood. So one plus will be one. One more will be the dimension of the space itself. So induction is quite easy here. Once you have this uh, theorem, which gives you you know in terms of the ambient space a union b instead of i don't have to work with a a and separate b and separately the boundary of v is taken inside a union b now we have another easy corollary it is something funny here you can you can say union of n plus 1 subspace is of dimension 0 Has dimension less than or equal to n. You can't say it's dimension zero. Okay, dimension when you take union may go up one at a time. You have seen that in the previous. Oh no, we haven't seen that. That is the statement of the previous uh, theorem. So this is an easy corollary to the previous thing, namely. You know, if take a two two zero dimension spaces, the union is less than or equal to dimension one. One take one more less than or equal to one plus one and so on. It goes on, right? So you will get dimension less than or equal to n. Now here is an example. Now start with uh, any integer n. Possibly positive, otherwise there won't be anything left here. And take m to be smaller than that. Okay, you can take equality also. Let m upper n lower m curly m upper m lower n denote the space of all points in R n. At most, m of whose coordinates are rational. Here we had our curly R M men earlier, where exactly M coordinates were rational and so on. Now, at most, so you have to be very careful here. Okay, at most M of whose coordinates are rational, and curly L L N M same N M denote the space of all points of in R N. At least M of whose coordinates are rational. Okay, n is the total dimension R n. This m denotes how many coordinates are rational and how many coordinates are irrational here. The first part is uh, for m, at most m of them are, are rational. The second part is at most, uh, at least m of them are uh, rational. Okay, then dimension of curly m is less than equal to m. Dimension of curly L less than equal to L minus M. Okay. How do you do that? Let us look at this space. Coordinates at most M of them are rational. So you can start with R N zero, which is no coordinate is rational. Okay. It is full. All the all the coordinates are irrational. This R and zero, we know that is zero dimensional. Then R n one, 
exactly one coordinate is you know, at most at most you know, at most uh, m coordinates are rational right at most exactly one coordinate is rational that is also included here like that 1 2 3 up to m okay exactly now each of them we know we have studied they are zero dimensional how many are there m plus 1 right so dimension is less than equal to m exactly similarly we have the other way around here here at least m m times m of the coordinates are rational so take all the m are rational okay at least m of whose coordinates are rational r n m then r n m plus 1 okay one more one more how many all of them r n n they are all again we have studied they are all zero dimensional how many are there n minus m plus 1 right therefore the diamond total dimension is less than one we will stop here we will continue again next time some theorems for n dimension spaces thank you